Hi, boys and girls. Um, I know it's only Wednesday. It feels like it's two weeks have passed uh, since Monday, but um, I know that you've been all, all been asked to learn a lot over the past couple of days, and these are not systems that traditionally we have taught online. So uh, we are trying to do our best with um, teaching you this content remotely. And uh, that being said, uh, we thought it would be a good idea to put together some sort of a tutorial to try to help you visualize what's happening with the flow of the heart. So I'll try to make it uh, short and sweet. I'm not very good at that, but I will do my best. So um, let's see. So I wanted to show you how the heart is tucked in between the lungs, okay? So um, it is kind of in between and behind the lungs. Uh, and when, so when you put your hand over your heart and on the left, it's, it is towards the left side, but it is not actually on the left side of your chest. It's more to the left than the right, but it's not just chilling there on the left side. Actually, your left lung, now remember, we are looking at someone's body. So this is the left. Um, and this is the right, obviously. So even though you're looking at it, this is on your right, uh, you are looking as though it's in someone and it's on the left. And you can see kind of how the lung kind of takes a dip in right here, okay? And that's because the heart takes up a little space that the lung would, would have. So your left lung tends to be a little bit smaller than your right lung because the heart is, I guess, in the way. So uh, I meant to point these out. This is kind of, it's supposed to be kind of see-through. So you can see like the, this is the trachea, bronchi, bronchiole, and then alveoli, okay? But all of your lungs are covered in capillaries. So you have, um, this is oversimplified, obviously. Let me get some red going here. So this is where all your gas exchange occurs. So it is wrapped the outside of your lungs are wrapped in capillaries, just like the alveoli are wrapped in capillaries. And that's where that gas exchange occurs. Okay, so let's take a look at the heart. So there are two very distinct sides of the heart, as you, uh, I'm sure you uh, got from the lessons that you've been doing on the circulatory system. So you can see here that this is the right atrium, right ventricle and then left atrium, left ventricle. Again, you're looking at this as though it's in someone's chest, okay? So you are looking at this and this is on their right side, not your right side as you're looking at them, but their right, and then this is the left, okay? So that's just an important thing to keep in mind when you're looking at uh, diagrams like this, okay? So then you'll see the different uh, arteries and veins, um, Valves are important because they control the flow of blood. Um, and then you, let's see, you've got one, two, three, four in here. Um, and then we're gonna talk on the next slide about how, how all of this works together with the lungs and try to simplify it for you as much as I can. Okay, now we're going to put this all together, okay? So um, I tried to put these pictures together where we've got the heart and then we've got the lungs and then the body. Okay, so let's talk about blood flow. So I'm gonna start on the right side of the heart, which is this side, okay? Because remember, it's on the person's right side, not your right side. Now, the reason why, I like to start with the right side just for consistency's sake. But I need you to think of the circulatory system as a closed system. So in other words, um, it circulates around and around and around and it never uh, goes out of the body, okay, unless you get a cut, I guess, but the blood just circulates around the body. Um, it doesn't have a clear entry port, point or an exit point because blood is made inside your body. Unlike the uh, respiratory system where you take air in and then that oxygen is, and carbon dioxide are exchanged and then you breathe it out. So it has a clear, beginning and ending point, whereas the circulatory system, again, just a closed system and it just goes around and around. So let's take a look at 
uh, where blood enters the heart on the right side. So you have your two largest veins in your body, the uh, superior and inferior vena cava, and they are here. And then there's different entry points, but they all come in this way, okay? And they are blue, again, because they carry uh, blood that has less oxygen in it. It doesn't have no oxygen, okay? That is not the case, it just has less. So we go with blue because it's easier than going with a like a uh, dark cranberry color or whatever, because that's really what, what it is. It's a, it's a little bit of a deeper red. And then the oxygenated blood is a bright red, but we're gonna go with blue. So anyway, you have the two biggest veins in your body that bring blood from the body up into the heart. Now, it's they're coming from the body because that blood has already dropped off oxygen to your body cells. So it's already done its job. Okay, it's gone around, it's dropped all the oxygen off. Remember, we need oxygen for cellular respiration. It's picked up carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide is a waste product of cellular respiration. And it needs to go to the heart. Well, why does it need to go to the heart? Because it needs to pick up oxygen. Why, why go to the heart? Why not go right to the lungs? Well, because the heart is a pump. And the job of the heart is to get the blood where it needs to be in the body. And because your body, um, because of gravity, your body isn't naturally going to push the blood all the way around your heart without some sort of a help, a helper, and that helper is the heart. Okay, so now blood comes into the heart and it comes into the right atrium. Now your heart has four distinct chambers or rooms in it, okay? So that's called, there are four chambers. Now those four chambers, you can kind of separate it uh, like this, okay? So this is one, two, three, four. Um, and they come in, that comes in in a certain order. And this is how I've always remembered it. So uh, let me erase this. So um, this is how I've always remembered it. So the right atrium is on the top, okay? And A, atrium, comes before V, which is ventricle, which is on the bottom. Just a little, just a little helpful hint that I've learned along the way. So blood comes in to the right atrium, goes through a valve. Now valves are important. I want you to think about the turnstiles at uh, uh, any sort of a sporting event or if you've ever taken public transportation, those are those turnstiles that if you try to go forward, if you go forward, you're fine, but if you try to back up, you kind of bang into the turnstile because it won't let you go. It's just like a valve, okay? So the blood flows through this valve and excuse my drawing, it is not a strength of mine, okay? So it goes through the valve this way. But if it tries to go back the other way, the valve will close, okay? Just like that turnstile. So it won't allow blood to back up and go the wrong way. Um, and you, do, you want your blood going in one direction because the whole point of of having your heart is to have it pump out to the lungs, not to just chill in there inside the heart. So you may have heard of someone who has a heart murmur. And a heart murmur is, the word murmur means to kind of, it's almost like a, a whisper. If somebody murmurs, that means, what a funny word now that I say it a bunch of times, but it is actually, um, if somebody's murmuring, they're kind of whispering, they're kind of, um, uh, talking in a really soft voice that you really can't hear them. So that a heart murmur is actually the sound that blood makes when it starts to kind of go through the valve the wrong way. So it's like a whooshing sound in the heart and you they don't you don't want that because what that tells you is that your um your blood is going back up into the atrium from the ventricle and that obviously will decrease blood flow because um, it's kind of getting crowded, almost like a bunch of people are trying to get into a, um, a sporting event all at the same time, and it jams up that turnstile. Um, and then people kind of get stuck, and people have to go back, and that's what happens with the valve. If, you're, if it's uh, not working properly, um, 
blood can back up and get and and not go on the path that it's supposed to. Okay, so like I said, it comes your blood comes into the right atrium and remember A comes before V and look at that V actually kind of makes a V down here. Pretty cool, huh? Um so A comes before V and uh, so it comes into the right atrium and then the right ventricle, okay? Now, it's still blue. Remember, it's not really blue, but go with me. So what needs to happen? What needs to happen right now? It has to go to the lungs. It has to pick up that oxygen because the, the role of blood is to transport nutrients um, and oxygen and waste throughout the bloodstream. So I'm gonna write this down here. So the role of the blood's job, okay? And I, I wish there was a way I could stop the tapping sound on the screen from my Apple Pencil, but there isn't, so sorry about that. So blood's job is to transport uh, nutrients, oxygen, and waste around the body. That's its job, okay? Now, that means it has to get around the body. And the only way to get there is by using the heart, which is a pump, and it gives it the force that it needs. So now the blood needs to go to the lungs. So it goes out the pulmonary artery. Let's make this a little bit thicker, it's hard to see. Okay, so it goes out the pulmonary artery, okay? Now remember, artery, away. So arteries always take blood away from the heart, okay? So it goes pulmonary artery, and then these arteries connect to um, the capillaries that are on top of your um, lungs. So these things are on the, the outside, okay? And then let's add some red, okay? So remember, um, the capillaries are, are where gas exchange occurs. So, but not just, this doesn't just happen to the alveoli, right? It also hap it happens at all the capillaries. So this is where gas exchange occurs inside the lungs to put oxygen and carbon dioxide into the blood. But in order to pick up that oxygen, it goes to the capillaries and veins that are wrapped around the outside of the lungs. So this pulmonary artery goes to the lungs and it picks up the oxygen, okay? Now it's tired, it's blue, which means it doesn't have any oxygen in it yet or and not as much as it needs. Now it's picked up what it needs, it's happy, and now it has to return back to the heart. Why doesn't it just go from the lungs to the body? Because it doesn't have enough pressure. There isn't enough oomph for it to make it all the way down to your toes. So it's got to go back to the heart and it goes to the heart. Now, now there are, it doesn't just come in on the left. See, like these are also pulmonary arteries. Oh, gosh, no, pulmonary veins. My goodness, sorry about that. This is a pulmonary artery right here. Okay, it kind of wraps behind the heart. So, because you have, remember that, um, that slide from before, you had um, a, the lungs kind of like this, and then the heart's in the middle, right? So some of the blood goes some of the blood goes this way and some of the blood goes that way. All right, so let's erase that horrible drawing. Um, so now we've got blood picked up. Now it has oxygen and it goes into the heart. I gotta get my red back. And it comes into the left atrium, okay? So remember, A comes before V, okay? So it goes left atrium, left ventricle. Now, the only reason it moves from one room to another is because the walls of the left ventricle are very thick, okay? And it ha it's stronger. And the bigger the muscles, the stronger the, the, um, the pressure and the more strength that it has. So it needs a lot of energy because it actually has to push the blood out, out of, this is called your aorta. It's your biggest artery. So your aorta is your biggest artery. And it has to push it out to the rest of your body. You also have a descending aorta right here because this goes to the lower part of your body. So that takes a lot of pressure. Um, 
So that's why the left ventricle has such thick walls of muscle on the sides because it has to be really strong in order to give the blood the pressure that it needs to make it to the rest of your body. So uh, I'm gonna erase this big mess and uh, just go through it uh, as simply as I can. Okay, so let's take another look at uh, the blood flow. Okay, so we've got, and I know that last drawing was really confusing because there's a lot going on, but just bear with me and let's walk through it again. So blood comes in from the body, it's blue, because it doesn't have all the oxygen that it needs. Where is it gonna go? It needs to go to the lungs because that's where the oxygen is, okay? So this is where the oxygen is and this is where the party is. This is where the, the blood wants to go, okay? So it comes in to the right side of the heart. Remember, A comes before V. It comes in the right atrium, goes down into the right ventricle, and notice how thick the, the, the um, muscular walls are here because it's stronger, so it gives it the oomph it needs to get to the lungs. So it goes out the pulmonary artery, remember artery, away, and it picks up the oxygen. Now, once it picks up the oxygen that it needs, the blood turns a brighter red color, and now it has to go back to the heart so it can be pushed to the rest of the body. So it comes back in, pulmonary vein. Now vein goes towards the body. There's no real fun way like A away, V towards, sorry. So it comes back in, into the heart, into the left atrium, then into the left ventricle. And now notice again how thick these muscular walls are around the ventricle. And then the blood gets pushed out through the aorta, which is the biggest artery in your body. And this is also goes this way. And it goes to the rest of the body. So that's going to the body, okay? So it is a, it is a, a closed circular system. And you'll see some funky pictures where there's a heart in the middle and then um, kind of a lung on either side. I just thought it would be easier, even though this just looks so confusing. Um, if you were able to see it um, side by side, okay? So we're gonna do it one more time. Um, and maybe you can pause the video and try to guess where I'm gonna go next. Um, but, um, the nice thing about this is it's predictable. So what I would do in class, um, and maybe I could find a way to, to do this. I don't know, we'll do maybe a flip grid or I don't know. But I used to draw, I would draw a heart on the floor. The custodians loved me, but it was dry erase, so it was okay. And um, they're mowing the lawn outside, so sorry if you hear a weird sound. Um, so um, I would draw a heart on the floor and I would have kids stand, I would say, stand in the left atrium and they would stand there and then they'd say okay i'm in the left atrium the blood is red and then now it goes to the left ventricle and then um they would walk we called it walking the heart and as a matter of fact i can put um a link to my um, youtube channel and there's an actual video of kids doing it so or you could be sitting in a circle and the person next to you so like the first person say is left atrium say I'm the left atrium, my blood is red. And then the next person, I'm the left ventricle, my blood is red. And then the next person would be, uh, I'm the aorta, my blood is red. And then it would be, uh, I am the blood cells or the capillaries in the um, body cells and my blood started red, and now it is blue. And we would just hop from, from uh, uh, structure to structure. Now, it doesn't matter where you start because it all ends up in the same place. It doesn't come out uh, in any spot. It, it just keeps going around in a circle. But uh, for tutorial purposes, I always start on the right side. So I'm gonna just do it one more time. Okay, so we're gonna start on the right side. Remember, this is the right and this is the left. Even though that's not what it is to you, it is when you're looking at a person. In through the vena cava. All right, vena cava is the biggest vein in your body. 
So it comes from the body um, and goes into the heart. Why? Because it's blue, it needs oxygen. And uh, so that is why it needs to go into the heart. It needs to go to the heart because it needs to get pumped to the lungs. So right atrium, A comes before V, right ventricle, and then out the pulmonary artery to the lungs. This is where the magic happens. It picks up the oxygen that it needs. Now it's happy, and now it needs to go back to the heart because it needs to get enough pressure to be pumped to the rest of the body. So it comes back in. I don't want to leave these guys out. It comes back in here. Left atrium, remember A comes before V. Also notice how thick these walls are here of muscle. Your heart is a muscle. We studied that during the muscular system. And the uh, blood goes into the atrium, then in the ventricle, then gets pushed out the aorta, and then ultimately to the body cells, okay? And uh, remember, you've got like this, um, let's see if I can get a, a color here, uh, where the, the blood drops off oxygen, picks up carbon dioxide, and this color in the middle, um, I can't, uh, I don't want to take the time to try to find purple, but just, let's just say this is purple. <laughs> okay, so it goes from red to blue. So these are your body cells, all right? And so now it's dropped off oxygen, picks up carbon dioxide, then goes right back to where it started. So a closed system, it goes in a big circle. Um, I know, even just by looking at this picture, it is it is a lot to take in, um, but it's predictable. Um, and that's one of the great things about the circulatory system is no matter where you start, you're gonna end up right back where you started. So make sure you reach out to your teacher if you have any other specific questions. I really, really hope this helped. Miss you guys.